Okay, so this video is about the Pythagorean Theorem. Now the key with the Pythagorean Theorem is that we can only use it for right triangles. So right angle triangles. Remember we talked about what right angle triangles are? They have a right angle in them, right? You'll see it in a sec. Now, the Pythagorean Theorem, folks, isn't really trigonometry, but what it does is it allows us to find the third side of a right triangle when you know the other two. So what we have to do, um, first of all, well, here it is, okay? This is the formula. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. I am sure you've seen this before. And if not, well then, let's get it sorted out now. And, uh, one of the tricks, or one of the, the things that we need to be able to do is to identify the sides correctly. And the most important thing at that point, identify it, or we'll realize that the C is always this long side here, okay? It's always this long side. That long side, folks, is called the hypotenuse. Okay. The other two sides, it doesn't really matter which you call A or which you call B, but uh, you have to remember that the longest side is B. Now, the funny thing here is, ladies and gentlemen, that um, you might not always be able to see the long side. Okay. It might, it might be a little bit tricky if it's in a different orientation, right? But that hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. It's always opposite the 90 degree angle, and it's always a long side in a right triangle. Okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to look at two examples here, and what we're going to have to do is identify the long side first. Uh, in this first one here, hopefully you can see that that's the long side, right? So that's going to be the C. This might be a good time to pause the video, and we can uh, try these three questions here. And uh, then restart it and we'll see how we work through it. But I'm about to work through it right now. Okay? So we're going to identify this as the C side. This would be A and that would be B. It doesn't really matter, right? So we go to 5 squared plus um, 12 squared equals X squared. So 25 plus 144 is equal to X squared. We get 169. This is equal to X squared. Hopefully you remember the long step here. long side is 13. 13 is the longest of the three sides, so you know you did it correctly. Okay? Looking at the second one here, uh, opposite the right angle, right? If you want, you can rotate the sheet, rotate it this way, and uh, if you rotate it, all of a sudden you have to see what happens. Uh, you can see that that's the long side, right? So feel free to do that with your sheets. Rotate them as much as you like. So let's do this. This is C, we'll call that one A, we'll call that one B, it doesn't matter, right? So, A squared plus B squared, or let's call it X squared, so this would be uh, X squared plus X squared is equal to 10 squared. So here we still have to have X squared is equal to 100. We have one extra step here, so we've got to bring this 36 over. So we're going to get X squared is equal to 100 minus 36, plus X squared is equal to 64. We take this third of both sides, we get X equals 8. So now, that means that this X is 8. It can't be the long side, because it's not the long side, so it can't be longer than 10, so it looks like it makes sense. Last one here, again, if you flip the sheet, we'll look, it's opposite the right angle. This would be the C. We're going to call that A, we'll call that a B. It doesn't really matter, right? x squared plus 7 squared is equal to 11 squared. x squared plus 49 is equal to 121. x squared is equal to 121 minus 49. Um, that means that x squared would equal... Whoa, let's just get it. Uh, pretty easy to do, right? We go at 129, just to be sure. We get 72. So the square root, the square root, we get x is equal to, let's go to the square root of 72, um, and we get 8.5. So in this case, the answer would be 8.5 for that side there. Now you'll notice, if you look at these three answers, right, these are nice whole numbers, and this is a decimal. Majority of the time, your answers are going to probably be decimal. But there are a few cases where you end up having nice fat round numbers. And there are known triangles for these uh, when to get nice round numbers. And these are called Pythagorean triplets. Okay? And they
they are, essentially they are, uh, the ratios of sides that uh, always give you a right angle triangle. So if I have a triangle that has sides 3, 4, 5, that means that the uh, triangle has to be a right angle triangle. So if I show you a thing here, so if, um, if you're going to say that this is 3 and that's 4 and that's 5, it means that this has to be a right angle triangle. Now the cool thing is, is that it's not just 3, 4, 5, it's all the multiples of that. So if you multiply everything by 2, you're going to get 6, 8, 10, which ends up giving us this triangle here, right? Or you could multiply it by 5 if you want. 15, 20, 25. You can multiply it by any constant, and you're going to get a similar proportion, and it means that uh, it's going to be a right angle triangle. So, 3, 4, 5 is one of the most common uh, ones. It's actually called the 3, 4, 5 rule. If you start doing construction or just uh, have anybody you know that uh, is in the construction business, the 3, 4, 5 rule is a place we put the size of the triangle. Okay? You'll notice here as well. Uh, 5, 12, we still have that one for 13. So another triplet that we have is 5, 12, 13. And any multiple of that. So 50, 120, and 130 would also work, okay? Now see if, uh, if you're interested in looking at Pythagorean triplets, there's more of them, look them up online, see if you can find some of your own. But that essentially, ladies and gentlemen, is the Pythagorean theorem.